Awali ya yote kwanza na niendelee kutoa shukurani kwa jeshi la polisi kwa kutoa nafasi hii ya makamanda viongozi wa jeshi la polisi mikoa kupata fursa ya kujikumbusha mambo ya msingi ambayo yanaendana na majukumu yao hasa kipindi hichi cha uchaguzi. Mheshimiwa mgeni rasmi kwa siku mbili hizi tulikuwa tuna mada takriban sita ambazo zilitolewa kwa weledi na wawezeshaji e, watatu Justi Robert Makaramba jaji mtaafu mstaafu lakini pia mwalimu, mwalimu wa chuo kikuu mstaafu e, deputy IGP mstaafu e, ambaye pia ni mwalimu kwa sasa katika vyuo mbalimbali pamoja na mimi ambaye ni mtu wa haki za binadamu kwa kwa ujumla tumeweza kutoa nafasi ya e, waheshimiwa makamanda kujikumbusha sheria mbalimbali zinazosimamia uchaguzi hasa tukilenga maboresho na sheria mpya zilizotungwa regulation na miongozo tumeweza kupitia miongozo na standards za kimataifa zinazosimamia swala la usalama election security wakati wa uchaguzi ambazo ndio jukumu kubwa la jeshi la polisi tumeangalia misingi ya haki za binadamu majukumu ya polisi wakati wa uchaguzi tumejaribu kuangalia pia viashiria vya uvunjifu vya masuala ya usalama na haki za binadamu wakati wa uchaguzi na namna ya kukabiliana pamoja na mikakati ya pamoja ya kuendelea kuwa nayo wakati wa uchaguzi mwaka huu na mwakani mafunzo haya yamelenga hayo zaidi na tunashukuru kwamba eh, eh wote hao walikuwa wakakamavu muda wote na wamekuwa e, wa, 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 wamekuwa ni watu ambao wametoa ushirikiano mkubwa katika kutumia, kutumia uzoefu wao pia e, na na mambo mengine ambayo wao waliona kwamba ni, ni muhimu kujadiliwa katika mafunzo haya Mheshimiwa Mgeni Nasmi e, baada ya hapo tunaamini sasa sisi kama watetezi wa za binadamu e, lengo letu ni kwamba michakato hii ya kidemokrasia ambayo ni nafasi ya wananchi kuamua viongozi wao itakwenda kwa mujibu wa misingi ya kikatiba sheria na haki za binadamu hilo ndio lengo letu na michakato ya uchaguzi ikienda kwa misingi hiyo hakutakuwa na umwangaji damu hakutakuwa na ukiukwaji wa haki za binadamu hakutakuwa na mazingira yoyote yale ambayo yanakwenda kuvunja amani yetu ya taifa hilo ndio lengo letu kwamba uchaguzi usimamiwe vizuri uchaguzi uende katika mazingira ambayo wananchi wote watashiriki kwenye uchaguzi watapata nafasi ya kuchagua viongozi na viongozi ambao wananchi wamewataka watapata nafasi ya kuongoza nchi bila kuingia katika vurugu zozote zile kwa kuwa jeshi la polisi ndio wana jukumu hilo lote duniani katika nchi yoyote tuliona kwamba tukifanikiwa e, kwa wao kulielewa hili na kufanikiwa e, kupata mbinu zaidi za kukabiliana na mm, mazingira yoyote ya kuvuruga amani wakati wa uchaguzi tutakuwa tumepiga hatua kubwa sana ya kulinda haki za binadamu ambalo ndio lengo letu sisi e, watu wa haki za binadamu lakini hata pia ndio lengo la mheshimiwa rais e, wa nchi hii kwa kauli zake mwenyewe lakini pia kwa kupitia falsafa ya ara nne. Kwa hiyo kimsingi e, mheshimiwa mgeni rasmi e, baada ya haya sisi hatuna jingine zaidi ya kuona kwamba haya ambayo yamefanyika kwa siku mbili yanakwenda kutumika. Na ni maombi yetu na tumeona kabisa nia ya waheshimiwa hawa kwamba yaliyopatikana hapa yatakwenda kutumika. Faida ni kubwa kwa nchi. Faida ni kubwa kwa jeshi lenyewe kurudisha imani kwa wananchi ambao wakati mwingine imekuwa e, kume, kumekuwa na imani tofauti tofauti hapa na pale na makundi ya kijamii lakini lengo letu ni kuhakikisha kwamba imani hizo e, na mitazamo hizo zinakwenda kuondoka e, baada ya kuona kwamba nia ya jeshi ni kufanya vizuri kwa sababu kukaa hapa tu tayari ni ninaonyesha kwamba jeshi letu lina nia nzuri na uchaguzi huu pengine wangekataa afanda IGP na ni angeweza kukataa tu lakini kwa sababu inaone kuna nia nzuri tume tume tumeweza kukaa hapa e, na tungeweza kukaa siku nyingi zaidi kama tungekuwa tuna uwezo lakini kwa sababu uwezo wetu tumeishia siku mbili mheshimiwa tumekaa hapa tukiamini kabisa kwamba haya yote yatakwenda kutekeleza lakini jambo ambalo tumejifunza kutoka kwa waheshimiwa hawa hoja yao kubwa ilikuwa ni kwamba mafunzo haya yasishie kwa wao tu kuna makundi mengine ambayo wanafanya nao kazi katika wakati wa uchaguzi e, jeshi linaweza likawa imara jeshi linaweza likawa nzuri nzuri kabisa likasimamia misingi yake lakini kumbuka kwamba usimamizi wa uchaguzi mheshimiwa mgeni rasmi unahusisha makundi mengine mengi 
unahusisha tume ya uchaguzi unahusisha makundi mengine vyama vya siasa unahusisha waangalizi wa uchaguzi unahusisha makundi mengi sasa makundi mengine yasipopata mafunzo kama haya ya kuangalia sheria za nchi zinawataka kufanya nini wakati wa uchaguzi kundi moja hata liwe na lijitahidi kufanya vizuri kwa kiasi gani linaweza lisifanikiwe kutufikisha pale watulivu kwa wito tulioupata ni kwamba na sisi tunaendelea kutoa kwa watanzania wengine na taasisi zingine zote ambazo zinahusika na masuala ya uchaguzi kama tume mahakama e, waandishi wa habari e, vyombo vingine kwa mfano wasasi za kiraia e, na wadau wengine wote wanasiasa wenyewe waone umuhimu wa kujengea mazingira ya, ku, ya kujifukumusha kumbusha sheria na kanuni za uchaguzi ili kila mmoja akazingatie na kufuata taratibu za uchaguzi na tuweze kuendesha uchaguzi wetu kwa amani na na utulivu hilo tumelichukua kwa sababu limetoka kwa sababu wao ndio wanasimamia uchaguzi na wameona kwamba wakati mwingine changamoto tunazozipata wakati wa uchaguzi zinasababishwa na makundi mengine ya ya yanayo ya, 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 yanaweza kuondolewa kama kutakuwa kuna fursa ya kukaa kwa pamoja kama hivi kukumbushana kujadiliana ushauri wetu ni kwamba yote ule anayehusika na uchaguzi aone umuhimu wa kujitengenezea nafasi ya kujifunza kuelekea kwenye uchaguzi kupitia sheria zilizoko miongozo iliyoko na taratibu zinazosimamia kila kundi kwa wakati wa uchaguzi ili tuweze kuwa kwa pamoja hata sisi ya sasa za kiraia tuna nafasi kwa sababu sisi ni waangalizi wa uchaguzi tuna, 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 tuna nafasi ya kujifunza na tumeandaa mikakati ya kuendelea kujifunza kwa hiyo tunaamini makundi mengine yote pia yataona umuhimu sasa tukifanya wote kwa pamoja maana yake swala la uchaguzi tutakwenda kuliendesha tukiwa na misingi ya pamoja wito wetu ni kwamba E, jeshi la polisi kama tulivyosisitiza toka jana tuombe sana kwamba misingi tuliyopata ya haki za binadamu sheria zetu tunazosimamia tuisimamie vizuri kwa sababu sisi haki za binadamu hatupendi kuona kwamba tunakuja kukemea ukiukwaji wa haki za binadamu hatupendi kuona kuja kwamba tunakuja kushutumu bali tunapenda kuona kwamba tunakuwa sehemu ya kuzuia e, matukio yasitokee kama tulivyofanya hivi kwa hilo ni ombi letu kwamba tutaendelea kushirikiana pale tunapoona kuna changamoto kukaa kwa pamoja kuzuia zisiwe ni sije zikajitokeza e, manake tunafanya prevention za kuliko kuja kutibu tatizo ambalo limechajitokeza naomba ni share kwa mheshimiwa mgeni nasmi nitumie fursa hii sasa kwa sababu tuna mgeni wetu mwenzetu kutoka umoja wa mataifa e, dada Hilda na haya tumuombea kwa dakika mbili aweze kutusalimia regional commissioners Uh, colleagues from Tanzania Human Rights Defenders uh, Coalition, uh, members of the press, I want to thank you for the opportunity that has been given to me to say a few remarks at this closing. I, I believe it has been a very constructive engagement in these past two days, and a lot of important recommendations has come from you in terms of areas of support that uh, you think we should collaborate with you on. And I, I, on behalf of the office, we've taken good note of these recommendations. I was very impressed to hear emphasis on the need for human rights-based approach in policing. And I just want to pass one simple um, message in relation to that that the office is very committed in supporting this initiative, but most importantly, bring, building a partnership with the police to strengthen the promotion and protection of human rights in Tanzania beyond the election uh, uh, um, context. So we're looking at a more long-term engagement with you, and I hope that God willing, I will also reach in the various regions to see what you're doing and how we can collaborate in strengthening this uh, uh, work that we've begun, the journey that we've begun together. It's an important journey. And so I would like to say that it is critical that we all embrace human rights-based approach to law enforcement work. You're not just law enforcement officers, but you're the guardians of democracy. And understanding application of human rights-based approach in your work remains very critical. It is simply put as the panel principles. Panel principles, which means the P is for participation, that we should exercise at all times 
the principle of participation to ensure that the rights holders are part of this process. The rights holders, different stakeholders, engaging with youth, engaging with women, engaging with persons with disabilities, engaging with older persons. We need to bring them along with us as we walk together this journey of strengthening the promotion and protection of human rights. So even in the election context, we need to ensure that these groups are participating. If they are not, we should also understand the barriers so that we are able to collectively work together to see how we can strengthen participation so that they can exercise their civil and political rights, including the right to vote. So we need to open spaces so that people can approach us and let us know how they are participating in this process. If there are challenges, how can it be addressed? If it's beyond the scope of the police to address, who are the other stakeholders that have a comparative advantage? How can the civil society assist in ensuring that these groups are brought at the same level to participate effectively and meaningfully? How do we leverage on the National Human Rights Commission, the Commission for Human Rights and Good Governance, to ensure that all these groups are brought together? So the principle of participation prompts us to look at the broader picture. Who are the different stakeholders that we should bring on board to work together with the police to strengthen the promotion and protection of human rights? The second principle is the accountability. It goes also beyond the police. We have the DPP, we have the judiciary. How is the entire accountability mechanism working together? Some of you raised concerns that there's, there are challenges of public trust or confidence. We need to open these spaces to also understand what are those issues that is bringing mistrust. How can we address them? as an institution. So this also plays a very critical role in building confidence and in also ensuring that uh, there is trust generated from the public in the institutions. The principle of equality and non-discrimination. At all times, we should ensure equality before the law, treating everybody, giving everybody an equal opportunity when they're in contact with the police and also beyond, including within the judiciary. The principle of empowerment is very important, not only for the rights holders. It's critical for the rights holders to know their rights. All the triggers we were discussing in the morning, what are the triggers of violence? We need to understand those triggers and use it to, to frame our capacity building and outreach activities. Human rights education, sensitization, awareness raising. How do we engage with the media to use their spaces to pass on the message we want to pass to prevent that violence from happening? So empowerment, human rights education is extremely important, especially in this context. For the rights holders, but for also the duty bearers. And that is why, together with THRGC, we said we should design a strategy for supporting capacity building activities, both for the duty bearers to discharge their functions in promotion and protection of human rights, but also sensitizing the rights holders on their roles and responsibilities. So this is very important. Every right comes with a responsibility and we need to ensure that we reach out to the citizens, understand, let them understand that they have rights, but they also have a duty and a responsibility. It's only through human rights education that we can inculcate that culture of respect for human rights and we can also be able to tr bring positive change at the individual level, but also in the society. The last one is the L, because I told you I was, I was going to talk about the panel principle. Linking our work to human rights standards is very critical that all that we do should be within the confines of the law. So I want to leave you with this simple message that we are committed to support you. Open your doors to us when we come. Let us discuss. Let us look at strategies. 
of working together, strategies of strengthening promotion of protection of human rights at all levels. It only needs proper coordination, coordination with different actors, but also most importantly, coordination within the justice system. We need to develop a culture of meeting periodically to understand what are the challenges. Because it starts from police, then it spills to judiciary. So we need to know what are the bottlenecks at every point and how can we address it to strengthen the entire justice system. The challenge might be in the judiciary, but the rights holders will not know that there is a problem either at the DPP level or within the judiciary. They'll just take it like the justice system has failed us. And these kind of things brings frustration. So we need to also strengthen our own coordination to see how best we can improve or address the concerns that is being raised by the citizens or the rights holders as a system. I believe these are some of the important recommendations that we can carry from this meeting. We cannot exhaust everything, but I believe, as I said, it's a journey that we've started together and we shall continue to work and shape how we should move on with this partnership. I thank you very much. Thank you.